Just, just curious, did anybody actually read the book? Okay, so wait, wait, keep the hands up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven liars. Okay. <laughs> There's a couple more liars across the street that they couldn't come and make it for the meeting. So. You know, it's funny when, when, when anybody always says that they read the book, I'm always like, really? Uh, be, because that's one thing that is really common is that people get books, buy books, and they never read them. So anybody who actually finishes a book, you're, you're in like the, the very few percentage of people that actually do it. So um, how did you like the book? Was it okay? Very good. Definitely okay at best. <laughs> okay at best? Is, yeah. I, I questioned whether or not I read it, but then I remembered in your book you said reading it also includes listening to it. So oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's 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 funny. People are like, you know, like uh, listening doesn't count. That's not reading. I, you call it what you want. I just want information. I, I want knowledge transfer. And for for me, I listen. But then if I find a book I really like that I really want to dive in and study, then I will go and buy the book and kind of do the combination. So with that, um, if anybody wants to get a hold of me, tab at refiners.io. I'm trying to slowly, I'm going through a, uh, an email identity crisis right now. Um, I, um, in the book I say, uh, you can email me at tab at tabpierce.com. I actually, after the book was published, threw up a website because I was like, I mentioned it in the book. Yeah. So, so it's pretty, pretty so-so. But just to give you a little bit of a background um, on me. Um, so um, don't, don't hate me, okay? I founded a company called Caliber Security Partners. So... <laughs> Um, and that company's uh, 10 years old. We do cybersecurity um, services. So things like we, we hack stuff um, and people pay us to hack them. Uh, it's pretty, pretty cool. Um, and uh, so we have, we, have a, we have a really an elite group of individuals. We also do things um, like write security policies and that kind of boring stuff. It's funny because you know you get you, we have people that just love that stuff and I'm like, more power to you. I I can't couldn't imagine doing that. So owner of Caliber, uh, founder of a um, company called Three P and T Security Recruiting. I'm a minority owner in that, but I'm a, I'm a co-founder. That's going to get annoying really fast. But hold. Oh, actually, I think I have a. Please bear with me. Bear with me. I think I can actually make that stop. Because we don't want to hear every single time my email blasts up. I need to get back on Zoom so in case anybody else shows up, I don't leave them hanging, or at least leave them hanging too long. So then I sit on a board of director for a bunch of other companies. Um, I only say that because it just maybe paints a little bit of a picture of me. Um, but one of the things I'm really proud of is the fact that um, I come from a really humble background. So um, my dad retired military. Um, then he went worked at a penitentiary and uh, did that. He retired. A month before he retired, he died. Um, my mother uh, retired from a. Uh, she worked as um, she worked as a manager of a child care center, so pretty humble be beginnings. And I always like to to joke about how you know people are born with a silver spoon in their mouth. I used to say I was born with a with a plastic spoon, but then I realized that our family was so poor I was born with like a spork. So we had like multi-use of that. So, um, but it's something I'm kind of proud of. I'm kind of proud of my, my background. So um, what, what I'm hoping for is that w anybody who really wants to, to take this information, 
that we're talking about here today, um, you know, you're going to be able to use it here. You're going to be able to use it in your personal life. You're going to be able to use it everywhere. And, and, and you know, one of the first things I'm going to show you or, or talk about is, um, is planning. And I, I want to go, it's not as boring as it sounds, but maybe it is. I just love to plan. So um, may, maybe, maybe it is boring, but we'll, we'll find out. Um, so, and one thing I hate is, um, PowerPoint or slideshows because they're crutches. So I've got my crutch because this is four hours. How the crap am I supposed to remember everything for four hours? Okay. So a little bit of a crutch, but I'm not going to fully use it. So, um, My crutch, my maybe crutch. Maybe you're not going to use it at all. Oh, gee whiz. I actually was joking about touching that, and I whopped it. So hold on a second. There's, there's a way around this. Oh, you got to open back up the PowerPoint because you're in Zoom right now. No, here we go. So so my, so my, the, the, the four topics that I want to reach and discuss... And they all tie together. And this is really, um, this should give you everything you need in life to pretty much accomplish anything. And, and I, I, I always hate it when I go, when I go places and I hear people say, you know, here's a magic bullet. Here's something you can do to, like, all your dreams come true. Well, uh, there's really not a magic bullet that makes all your dreams come true. The reason why I choose these four is because... I had to learn them in order to fix my life, not my personal life. Thank goodness I have a wife that um, was sane when I was insane. But um, but really, this helped me financially. Helped my help helped me turn around. I mean, you read the book, so you know we were in debt. The company Caliber was in debt seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars to eighteen different creditors. And, you know, for, for depending upon the size of the company and the organization, you, people may go, that's like nothing. But when you're a small company, that's something. That's a lot. And so we sit back and we were like, well, what do we do? Do we, you know, cause, because I would, I, I, I'd talk to people and they'd say, close your doors and just start over and file bankruptcy. And I would always go, that's really cool. It's a great idea, except for the fact that a quarter of a million of that, 250000 of that, I owe to the IRS, and the IRS does not forgive. So that means that I, they would be like, hey, that's great. Sorry it didn't work out for you. You know, when do we get our money? So what was also my greatest hope in repaying that debt and getting that down was also my biggest pain, and that was my company. I mean, it's really bad when when you when you look at something and it's like, I need this, and I hate this. And it wasn't that I hated the company; I hated all the stuff that we had to go through. Um, so I will talk about that um, because. Whether it's the company or whether it's life, there's a lot of similarities. So it's how do you like make things better? How do you fix things? And if, and if things are great, and I hope everything's great for everybody in here, but if everything's great, this will make it better. And and I live, you know, that, that's one of the things is, you know, often when I hear people and I'm like, I think that's theory. I think what the person's telling me is just theory and it's not based off of anything. I live this stuff. And so um, th this is like these, these four things, I'm confident that if people can, can master, they can master just about anything. So look at that. It worked. It worked. Yay. So first topic is why your plan is more important than your action. When I first set this up, I've given this several times, I really wanted it to be like confrontational where people are like, no, 
by action. The reason why I say this, I was at, um, I was at a conference about, about two years ago. A well-known motivational speaker gets up there. There's about a thousand people in there. Gets up there and just like, I mean, the guy's like vibrating. I mean, literally vibrating on the stage. He's like, yeah, he's getting all excited and everything else. And he's like going off on, on all these topics and about like, you know, about like that, you know, just pumping everybody up, just motivating, right? And everybody gets up, so, yeah. And, and I looked over at my wife and I went, you know what? I'm fired up and I'm ready to go. Everybody in here is fired up and ready to go. Problem is, is if lucky, if they're, best case scenario, they're, they're lucky and that motivation takes them to where they, they want to go. Most likely, it's like getting in a car and it's like, I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm, I'm fired up. I'm going to go. I'm going to go 80 miles an hour. I got a clean road. And then you get there and you make great time only to find out that you drove the wrong way. Right? So motivation in and of itself is fairly useless. It's actually going to get you in trouble. Right? So, um, so I, I kind of, you know, was, was standing there as everybody was clapping. And I was like, man, there's going to be a lot of people in here that are going to go back and start going down and, and, and start doing something and they don't have a plan. So I, I live a plan and I always say this, I want, I, I, I want to meet the person who plans more than I do because that's a sick individual and because that person has issues and they're going to make me feel better about my issues. So I want to meet that person. That person is out there. So I threw up some of these sayings or whatever because it's the impact that I want you to have. The more you plan, the more you'll follow your plan. Does that make sense? All right? Maybe it's too simple. The more you'll take action on your plan and the more you're going to control your life. And the reason why I say that is because so many of us, just feel like like our life is out of control. It's spinning. I mean, and that that could be you know your life at home. It could be your life at work. It could just be everything. And so, one of the big reasons why why I got so involved with planning was because. I was I was flailing. I was I was in need of anything I could anchor myself to to solve this problem. And that problem was only going to be solved if I had a plan. If I really had something I could sink my teeth into. All right, and then I got a couple of other snappy little things, right? In order to overcome what you need to overcome, you have to, have an, you have to be an excellent planner. To achieve, you need to have a detailed plan. Okay, I'm going to show you. Has anybody in here, anybody download the Opportunity Pipeline? I know you did. Anybody look at it? Looked at it? Most of the time when, when I show people that, they go, that's just too much. It's just too much stuff. It's too much of everything. And I can't do that. I hear that all the time. I hear people go, that's just too involved. I can't do that. I can't, I don't have the time to, to, to do that. You know, use it, use the opportunity pipeline. Don't use the opportunity pipeline, but you have to plan. The reason why I use it is because it grounds like, everything I'm doing, okay? And then, I love that, it's, it's in the details where we accomplish great things, and we need that, okay? We're gonna accomplish great things, we have to be detailed. And one of the things that I always want to do, um, because sometimes the day just doesn't go the way you want it to go, but I always wanna be able to go to bed at night and think, well, that was a good day. I, you know, things didn't go exactly the way I wanted them to, 
but today was a good day. I always want to say that today was a good day. And take a swig real quick. I'll say this because seriously, my life was my my life was turmoil. I mean, it was it was rough. And I, I mentioned it in the book. I would go home. I would sit in this lazy boy chair. I turn the TV on, and I don't watch TV. I turn the TV on, and I'd stare at the TV. I think I did this for a week or two weeks, and my wife was sitting next to me. I wouldn't talk to her, and I didn't talk to anybody, and all I would do is go through every possible scenario. Well, except that's not true. What scenarios did I go through? The negative, negative ones. And nobody ever goes, you know what? What's going to happen with this? It's all this awesomeness. We go, I'm screwed. And I did. And I, I remember, I remember um, reading about Wesley Snipes going to jail for tax evasions. And I was convinced I was going to jail. I, I was convinced. Talked to our um, attorney. He said, like, people don't go to jail for this. This isn't tax evasion. You're not going to jail. But those are the things that run through your head. You get worried, you freak out, you do that. We don't sit back and, and think, this could be great. This could be phenomenal. You know, at the end of this, I might have this. Um, we just don't do that. Um, so one of the things when I was, when I was going through this is I, and it wasn't like immediate, but I would just say today, I'm going to have a great day today. I'm going to follow a plan. I'm going to make it through that today. I'm going to make it through that plan. And then I'm going to, I don't even care about tomorrow. Tomorrow's not going to be great. Today is going to be great because I don't know what tomorrow is. And I'd barely make it through that day, and I would think that was a great day. I'd wake up the next morning, and I'd go, I'm going to make today a great day. I'm not going to worry about tomorrow. I had to do it one at a time. And the whole thing was, is I was just trying to find some sort of base to build off of. All right. Oh, look at that. This is a made up. This is made up. Oh, look at your face. Oh, my gosh. Okay, this is made up. Except some of it's not, right? That's like overwhelming. Is that overwhelming to anybody? Come on. Yeah, okay. So let's break this down. The reason why I do this is because when, when I used to show this to people, would be like, oh, I can't do this. It's not as bad as you think. So here's the deal. Let's start with this, okay? I am not a fan of... Uh, vision boards and the reason why is I because I'm a fan of action so I I will make an action board but I won't make it about things like because and I think I mentioned it in the book about like we we're we we're over at a, uh, my son and sister-in-law's house and we were making um vision boards she wanted to make them so we we're making them and I'm like oh look at this I want a yacht and I want this and I want that and I went home and then like about a month later I was like I don't want any of that stuff I was just like cutting pictures out. So what my goal is, is to, to, to try to put, you know, more of a, like an action board. These are things that I want, right? And I just, these are all made up, by the way. For the, I think all of them are. And, and this here is kind of my ode to a vision board, okay? This is like, and I just say my present is because this is where I kind of want, like this is where I, this is where I want my future to be. And when I first started doing this, I was like, I don't even know why I'm doing it. It's, you know, it, I'm not even sure there's any value in it. The interesting thing is, is a lot of what I, I'll show you for my, for my 2020 is starting to impact this. So the things on this are not as far-fetched or down the road or whatever that they used to be. And this is all, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's, it can be anything you want it to be. It could be personal, it could be business, it could be whatever. Um, so, and that's my next book, Outlast Everything. So, I, remember, I think I'm more excited about writing that one than I, than I was about writing this, the one I wrote. Um, uh, 
Because when I first started writing uh, Upsurge, I was, I was in a bad place. And Upsurge is a, uh, it's, it's a timeline of when things were completely messed up, jacked up and bad, to when we came out of it. So it starts off with like, you know, just pain. And then it kind of goes into where I was in a better place. So I think that's why. And because probably the greatest, one of the greatest things I learned from writing or, or from going through everything that I went through was, was just that I can outlast anything. Right? That doesn't mean I'm, and I'm, I'm jumping ahead, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to have problems. Right? It just means I know I can do it. So this is my present. Okay? Now, I green out. If I've accomplished something, I put it in green. Okay, that, that way I just know, right? And some of these are, are right. You know, I got my book published. One speaking engagement this year. Thank you all for being here. <laughs> Thank you. I got the green. That's a real one. Ten podcasts. I think I've done, I don't know, 15 or so like that. Um, and then, you know, Caliber's Revenue. Uh, you know, I, I'm... I'm building, just so you know, this, this one here is a little bit more accurate. Um, part of what I'm doing with everything is it's a company I'm building called Refiners, and we have advisory board groups where it's everything from business leaders to um, industry-specific uh, uh, people that get together and they advise each other and help each other grow. So that's what that is. I've got two of those groups. Um, I, I'm going to have four by the end of the year. Um, and I'll tell you, I'm, I'm totally, but I'm excited about it, so whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm digressing. But it was the advisory board group that put my company, I mean, we finished Q2 400% above our pre-pandemic sales quota. It was a phenomenal quarter. So everybody, even in our industry where everybody's like collapsing, I mean, we were just growing. And we had, you know, we had all kinds of companies that do what we do, contacting us. Hey, can you subcontract? You know, can we subcontract? We do, you know, would you subcontract us? And I'd say, oh, we don't have anything. But hey, things get too bad. Let me know. We'll talk about bringing you in. So I'd like monitor them and, you know, look at it as a way to maybe um, buy companies. Anyway. But the point is, is like, the, you know, the one that was the, my present and then the 2020 opportunity, you do that once. Okay, so it looks like this big thing. You do those once. You, you don't, the worst thing and is I never change a goal. I, I put a lot of time in um, figuring these things out. Even like this stupid credit score of 750. Man, my, our credit got jacked up over the last three years. And I was like, I got to fix that thing. And it didn't take long, but it's well above that. But that was, that was actually kind of funny. I mean, you're looking you'd go, yeah, so anyway. But you don't change a goal. I never change a goal. So I want them to really be thought out really well. Um, and that's why when we, when the pandemic came, the first thing that, that we talked about is like, do we change the goal? Do we lower the goal? And it was, and we all agreed, no, we don't lower the goal. If it's not a pandemic, it's something else. It's always something else. So we don't lower the goal. But the first two, you only do those once a year. And then, and then, you, then you come back and you look at it. And the reason, what's really cool when you use this whole thing, when I go in there and I look, I, um, I'm looking and saying, this is what I'm doing today, this hour by hour, my daily things, it leads into the week, the month, the year, and then that. So I will use my opportunity pipeline to, um, to really get in there and like see the vision of my future, okay? And by the way, I didn't say it, opportunity pipeline, if everybody probably knows this that read the book, it, it that stemmed from, I'm, I'm a cynical individual at times, and I was on my way to work, 
Um, driving with driving with my wife, we share an office, or she shares an office with us. And I and I was like, I'm tired of all these tasks I have to do. I'm tired of these to do lists. I'm tired of that stuff. And I said, you know, and I said, you know what I need? I need more opportunities. I need opportunities. I don't need tasks. I don't need to do lists. I need opportunities. But I was being cynical the whole time. But I was just like, you know, blah, blah, you know, just like kind of venting. By the time we got to the office, I went, you know, I actually feel kind of good. <laughs> I actually feel good because I'm talking about opportunities. I'm not talking about tasks. And it was really weird because that cynicism went to being positive because just the mere fact of talking about opportunities, you know. So to me, everything I do is an opportunity, you know. Everything I do. So monthly. You guys are getting it. I'm not going to go over all this. Monthly. Pretty simple, right? Monthly is, so just a little insight into my head. When I do monthly, at the beginning of the year, I don't expect it to go, you know, perfectly. One month, one month, one month. You know, it's not, it's not one twelfth. So what I'm looking at is I'm saying the end of my, the end of the year is going to be, is going to be a lot more because it's going to take time to build things up. So, um, you know, those, you know, type of things, by the way, if I don't finish one, I save these things. If I don't finish one, I put it in red because I want to be able to, to show. Um, and if you have questions, ask them, please. Yeah. What happens if you finish all of them early? I just make more goals, more opportunities. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because. There's two. Th there's a couple things I do. One is I, I I make more opportunities. I don't go on vacation. Vacations are really bad for me because I'll go on vacation and I'll come back with another business started <laughs> because I don't. I just don't really stop thinking. But I'll I'll do a couple things. One, I'll make new opportunities. The other is I'll question why I set opportunities so low that I could finish them so quickly. So I want to be able to go back and say. Okay, great. I overachieved, but why did I do that? Why did I set these opportunities so low? Okay, but the weekly rolls into the monthly, the monthly rolls into the year. So everything I'm doing, I'm getting a picture because what I want to do is I want to have a vision for what I'm, where I'm going. And by the way, when I talk, I keep thinking, man, I sound like a life coach. I, I hate the term life coach. So I want to be like a get things done coach, if anything. I just like, I just want, you know, I want to help people have the rubber meet the road, like things they can actually sink their teeth into, not just like theory and that. So weekly, daily. And here's a clue about my daily. Um, and this is actually kind of, this one's kind of real because it's like, I want to present good four strong hours. Add 15 people to this event that we're doing at the end of the September, the one with Trevor Mawad. Today, you're going to add 15 people? Yeah, but I've got two people that are working on that for me. So when I say me, I mean my team, sure. right? Um, and the reason why is because we're behind schedule. So I need those 15 in order to get back on schedule because I'm kind of punishing myself for missing other days, right? So it's like, we got to get in there. See, but um, I'll put these four up there. And you know, one of the things is, is that I, I try to hit about 80 to 90% accuracy. Okay. So this take Catherine out on the town is probably the one that isn't going to happen. <laughs> Taking my wife out tonight. Jason, that's probably the one that's not going to happen. It'll be like, you know, Something's going to have to give, so, um, you know, TV dinners. No, I don't know. Um, you, might, you might not be recording any longer. <laughs> <laughs> She's so used to the crap, you know. I, it's been years of, of having to listen, listen to me in that. So, so good for you for recognizing 
Yeah. 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 Oh, you mean this one? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He even gets an exclamation point. It's so important. So I have a question, Tab. When you, um, because I know on previous slides you get some that are highlighted in green and some that are highlighted in red. The highlighted in green, how long do you leave those on there and highlight it in green? Or once they're green, do you drop them off? Or no. Do you leave them on and just keep building them off of it so that you always see that, hey, look at how much I've accomplished? Yeah, I, I leave them because... Okay. Because I want to be able to see that I have accomplished sure. something, right? Especially those ones. The, the, the real one is the year one, right? I mean, the monthly ones are only going to be green for a month. Sure. Yeah. But the daily. So most of your time, I mean, think about it like this. Your, your my present is and your 2020 happens once a year. Your monthly happens 12 times a year. Okay, your weekly happens 52 times a year. So when you look at that whole thing and you're like, oh man, that's a lot. It's not. It's everything leads to it. So even the the, the daily, the daily is one that that really has to be driven. Hey, hey, Tab, just so you know, I, did, I printed some for everybody too. Awesome. Or write notes on it. Cool, thank you. And someday, what's that? Someday I'm going to turn this into an, an application. But um, this is just a lot going on. It'll be part of the uh, refiners group. Um, anyway, then this here, right? This is my hourly. And I, and I broke this down, um, I, and I always want to give credit. There's a guy named Ed Milet. I don't know if anybody knows Ed Milet. Um, and he came up with this whole thing about three days. I can pack three days into one day. I look that he lives his life in sprints and it's like, what can I do? And he goes, and, and, and I love that. So I couldn't come up with anything that beat what he had come up with. So I didn't want to change it. So the reason why I break it down like this, um, is like, I even put down personal. So it's like, I don't feel like, oh my gosh. What am I not doing? Well, I'm, it's personal, right? Um, but the, the idea is, is that if you follow something like this, then every hour you, you'll have, you have time to stop just for a minute and say, how was that hour? Because normally what happens is if we don't plan, we're like, oh, I need to do this. And then that goes off for days or weeks or whatever, right? And then we can, it's easy to, it's easy to get off track for a couple days, a month or, or a week or a month or whatever. And the goal of this is to like get you, you're only off track for up to an hour, maximum of an hour. And then you're going to reset. Okay. Now plans never go as planned. And I may have said that that may be a slide in here later, but they never go as planned. So there's a tendency to just go, Oh man, it's it's 6 a.m. and I, I slept I slept from I slept till six. My 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 plan is shot. It's not even gonna bother. Right? You just re you just recalibrate. You reset. You know, you still have your daily goals that you're after, you're trying to hit, but you reset. Okay. That's what I, what I want to do is I want to be able to reset because I want to try to get the, I want to try to maximize everything that's going on. And then I do, I just have a little review like, Hey, you know, like how was that six hours? And then I rate it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm weird. I just like, will say this went well. And I'll, I, I rate it like from one to 10 and I'll say like, and I do decimals because I'm always like, it wasn't a seven and it wasn't an eight. It's like, I don't know why, you know, seven's not as good. Eight's pretty good. So I'm like 7.8, I don't know. Do what you want with that. But the, the point is, is I want to review. I want to know what the heck I'm doing. I want to be able to just, because it's not, it's not just, you just, I just want to get more out of life. We want to get more out of life. Um, and that's, you know, that becomes really important. At least, at least it does for me. Okay. Um, this is three days. 
18 hours. Um, and one of the great things, it's funny, you know, there are things I look at in the book and I'm like, man, I would love it if I still did everything I talk about doing in the book. Right? Like I, I used to wake up at four o'clock in the morning, every morning, four o'clock, I'd wake up and a pandemic happens. Now I'm like, eh, five o'clock seems pretty good. <laughs> But I want to get back into that. Technically, I woke up this morning at 3.30 because that's what time I woke up 4.30 here, but it was 3.30 back home. Yay! So, anyway, but this is where I spend almost all of my, my time. I'm looking at this thing all the time, every day, multiple times a day, looking at it. And this is one, if you have questions, this is a great one to jump in. Suggestion. Um, yeah. When we were reviewing this earlier on our Zoom call, and you, I think the thing that I really appreciated that you said the most was how many people say, gosh, today just got away from me, and I feel like I didn't get anything done. Yeah. And then you said, with this program here, you can just lose an hour and then refocus. So you're not losing a whole day. You're yeah. Hours, and that really just, you know, struck a chord. Yeah. And that's, that, that's everything I'm trying to do is just like, you know, I know, I know that I'm not going to, I'm not going to be perfect. I, I know that, you know, and the tendency is, is to beat ourselves up. God, I can't stick to this. I can't do this. I can't do that. And it's like, just monitor it a little bit more. Can I add something? <laughs> um, Go ahead. So I am totally ADHD. And so for me, when I first had the opportunity pipeline, I was like, Oh, no, this is not going to work for me at all. And I'm the type of person that, you know, bright, shiny objects all day long. And I'll have days where I'm like, I have been so busy and I have gotten nothing done. Um, and so when Tab, because he's been after me, we've been married 33 years. So he's been after me since year one to make a plan, you know, plan my day out, time block. And when I had four kids at home, I was like, yeah, time block. Um, but... <laughs> But, um, and then in my mind, because this is the way my brain thinks, I'm like, if I make a plan and I get off of it, then I have to redo my whole plan. All day long, I'm redoing my plan. And honestly, sitting right here right now, I just realized I don't have to redo my plan. I just have to get back on track. So, um, huge aha. I bought a lot out of this meeting. Just want you to know. <laughs> <laughs> It's a 33 years. I know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what was the uh, part of the presentation about being successful? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> off a good start. <laughs> Personal and business. Yes. Oh, yeah. I love it. That's awesome. Yeah. Any other questions about this part? Um, just a clarification. So uh, you mentioned not changing goals. Uh, and the yearly and monthly and stuff, this is the place where we can, or opportunities rather, this is the, the place where we would change them. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, if, and I've never done it. Maybe I'll do it sometime. If I was to start off and say, this is what the day looks like. And then at the end of the day, if, you know, if I looked at it, how it really, how it looked versus what it, what I had started off to, it looks different. And one of the, one of the, I mean, I don't, talk about this but like as I go down through the day I like clear them out I'm like okay I slept that's gone I did that that's gone I did that that's gone but then like let's say um gets you know let's just say um whatever right just one of these um get set up introductions right that didn't happen for for me I just start piling them up top because I'm like these are the things that it's kind of like uh, I didn't get those done so I'll just put it up. Then, then that becomes, it, it's not based on time. It's just kind of based off of um, the things that I still have to do that I didn't do yet. So you're, we're going to be at 10 a.m. Um, halfway through the presentation. And you're going to do a review. Um, and how often do you say it's 10 o'clock? That's, that's always my review one. And spend just a few seconds on going back and looking to see where you're at for that first quarter or the, our first third. How do, you, how do you do your review? On that, I mean, I don't spend a lot of time. I just want to, it's really more of a gut, right? It's more of like, 
I can look and I can say, you know, I overslept. I didn't show up to Big Sky Collision. Just, I was tired. I didn't come. I just didn't show up. Um, you know, then I'll review and I'll go back and I'll go, man, that's definitely a zero. Okay. I, I, that's, you know, and I, I do put it in. I mean, I'm not going to put it in because we're going to be talking. So I'm not going to do, I'm not going to like, oh, hold on, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Right. But yeah, I do. I mean, I, I, I monitor. And then, and then like every hour, I just go, how was that hour? And I'll go, I mean, that, it wasn't my best, you know, and I, I, I could do this or whatever. So I do try to, I just try to just ask. I don't like overanalyze. Like when I first started doing this, I'd go, I'm going to have 55 minutes and then I'll spend five minutes in reviewing. And I'd go like, five minutes is like way too long by probably four minutes and 40 seconds. All I want to do is I just want to like gauge myself, you know, so. You're setting this up the day prior. Oh yeah, I do. So that's a great, that's a, that's a great point. So I always set it up the, the, the night before. And there's a couple of reasons why. One, because I want to be able to wake up, hit the ground going. I just want to be able to start. The other thing, um, when I learned this, um, it was just kind of like this aha moment. You know, we have a conscious mind and a subconscious mind. And the conscious mind is in charge about 10% of the time. The subconscious never sleeps. So your subconscious is always active. So, I mean, I'm still up here walking back and forth, right? I haven't thought once, left foot, right foot, left foot. You know what I mean? I mean, when I, when I learned how to dance, and that's a suspect when I say I learned how to dance, I did have to do that, you know, whatever. Um, but your subconscious doesn't sleep. So one of the things that I do is I go to bed at night and I do two things. I will, I will think about what is it I, what is it I want to accomplish tomorrow? These are the things I have. What is what, what are the critical things? What are the big things I want to accomplish? So I do that. Because one, I'm thinking since my subconscious doesn't sleep, maybe I can come up with some good ideas while I'm sleeping. The other thing is, is I give my, I give my subconscious a problem to solve. Just one. Like, hey, can you work on this? It doesn't mean that I'm always like, wake up and go, oh, that's great. I talk about it in the book about like how I did this one time because we I was like, we need more revenue. I had to figure out how we get more revenue. So it was when I first started out like asking questions and I had asked the, the told my subconscious, hey, think about how we get more revenue. Work on that problem. Where are we going to find new revenue? So I have this dream where this guy approaches me and says, hey, we want, I, I want to talk about funding or, you know, doing an investment in your company. Like, okay, great. Comes out and he goes, that's not right for me. But since you've been in business for almost 10 years, I'm going to write you a check for it. And I think it was two point some million dollars. Just, hey, thank, good job, man. Here's two point some odd million dollars for keeping in business for 10 years. And I'm like, this is great, right? Now wake up. And I'm like feeling just really happy because I got two point some odd million dollars in my dream. And I just started laughing. I was like, OK, I need to work on my subconscious. I needed to, like, you know, understand what it is. But that for me was like, wow, you know, my subconscious actually went out and tried to solve something. It didn't didn't really solve it, but it was just kind of like an awareness like, wow, that that actually works. Um, and, and even like I went, I'd go like for the last week, I'd go to sleep at night and I'd think, okay, I, I need to think about what I'm going to talk about here. And, and I kid you not, I have given this presentation four or five times already in my sleep. And it was probably much better there than it is here because <laughs> I would wake up and I'd be like, wow, that was awesome. That was great. Now, what was it I said? And I couldn't remember anything. I had that feeling of that. It was great. So 
Then there's this, these other other things, right? And and really, so I always like to say, what did I learn today? Because I save these things every day, you know, because I want to make sure I'm learning something. It doesn't have to be something big, right? Um, you know, I just want to be able to just say I learned something. Okay. The other thing is what what successful happened? Because sometimes nothing seemed like it went well. And I want to be able to say, if it's a great day, I want to be able to acknowledge that I had some great successes. But if it's not a good day, it was a bad day, there's still something that went well. And I want to acknowledge that because that's the kind of, you, you have to have something you hang your hat on, right? You have to go back and say, what happened good today? And then I, I coined this term called affirmation because I, I hate the idea of affirmations, right? Where it's like, you know, today I'm strong and in control. Today I'm strong and in control. It just, it sounds hollow to me. It's just, I'm like, I'm not going to say that. Or it's like Stuart Little, like, you know, people like me and darn it, I'm good enough. <laughs> right? It's like, whatever. So, you know, you so who said that? Did you hear that, Kath? I know. I've been telling them you got to copyright it. Copyright works. Affirm action. It's like Cutie Patootie with whoever it was, Rosie O'Donnell back in the 80s. She actually copyrighted it. We got to do that then. If you can copyright Cutie Patootie, then you can do this. <laughs> That's what I'm um, but really, the, the idea is that I want to I want to be able to I want to be able to tie something that's an, an like that's an affirmation to something that is an action. Because everything I do, I want to have an action to it. I don't want I don't want to just sit down and go like, man, I feel great, I feel awesome. I didn't do anything, but boy, did I make myself feel good. I don't want that. Okay. And I said this, plans never go as planned. And, and that's, that's really important to know because it's really easy to beat yourself up. It's really easy to go, man, it's just this day hasn't gone well. This week hasn't gone well. And, and you know, it, it happens. I mean, I mean, I'll sit back and, and like, um, you know, I have so much going on right now that, um, you know, I, I was, I'm working on getting refiners up this presentation of by Trevor Moad at the end of the, at the end of September, um, writing the book, all of these things that I kind of just went, something's got to give, I can't do all this stuff. So I was like, okay, until September 25th, 26th, when that's done, when Trevor Moad's is done, or October 1st, that time frame, I'm going to start writing the book again. Because that was the thing that kept falling off. And I was like, I'm just going to put it off until I can actually plan it. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Whoops, nope, I'm going the wrong way. Okay, so any, any questions before we move on? I have a comment. Uh, I'm really glad you brought up the plants never go as planned. Uh, we have uh, tried in the past to, I'm just gonna use disassemblies as the, as the example, uh, where we, we wanted to plan out our disassemblies. And it's super hard to do because customers show up at wrong times, they don't show up at all. We, you know, we block out two hours, we get three disassemblies done, and then one comes in and it's gonna take six hours to do that one. And the plan goes out the window, and it is really disheartening when that happens, unless you plan for the plan not to come with plan. Yeah. So, so that, that that's an interesting point, and I'm glad you said that. I, and it's really hard. I don't. If you're waiting for somebody, right? If you're waiting for a client to show up or a customer to show up, and they don't show up, but. Um, like all of these things, look at, let's see. Um, yeah, every one of them relies on me. Okay, I used to put things up there like, oh, I'm gonna, um, you know, um, find out from XYZ company 
if the, you know if they're going to go with our proposal. I call them, I email them, and they don't respond. I can't, I can't make that thing green at the day because they didn't respond. And I'd go like, well, that's stupid. So I would maybe change it to reach out to them, contact them, something that I can, I'm in control of that part. So I hate having things where I'm not in control of it. So if it's a situation where you're waiting for somebody, right? I might have a secondary plan. This is my plan, it's my block. These three hours is for disassembly. Now, what happens if they don't come? What happens if somebody doesn't show? What happens if somebody shows up late? Here are some things that I'm going to work on during that time period. If you can do that, right? If, if, as opposed to just go, oh, there it goes out the window, right? Or maybe like if, if your block is like right here, these four hours or whatever. So I might, I might go, okay, that person didn't show. So I'm going to jet into this one. I'm going to do this one. I'm going to do this one. That way, if they do show up, I can then like push that down. I'm still going to meet that, that three hours. The other thing I don't do, like, because, because I, just as an example, like if I'm going to, if I'm going to like reach out to clients or talk to clients or just check in with them, I don't say, uh, spend two hours reaching out to clients. I say, reach out to these specific clients and do this specific action. Because if I just say two hours is something, it's, it's so vague. It's like, how do, you, how do you do that? So I try to be as detailed as possible and, and, and in, as controlled as possible. Any, anything else? Comments, questions? Cool. So you, you, uh, let's say there's... Uh got to talk, got to call a tax man and you know it's going to be bad news, but you put that at a specific time to kind of get yourself pumped up for, you know, I, want to, I know it's not going to be fun, but I got to do it. Yeah, yeah, I'll put it down there. And I will actually go as far as to say, because I know if I'm dealing with taxes, it's very rare. That they're like, hey, just wanted to call and say, great job, man, paying your taxes. Good job, just awesome right so normally it's not good right so I am gonna look and say I'm gonna do this have this conversation and I'm going to ask these questions and try to direct the topic this way I'm and I will try to find I will always especially in situations like that I, I become selfish what's in it for me what am I going to get out of this discussion with somebody that you know i'm going to get some information right and like as an example real quick when we were going through this and we had a we had a um a revenue officer and we moved we we moved our company from king county to snohomish county and king county is where seattle is and so everybody i mean we're like the smallest of small right but Snohomish County and Everett, we're, we're fairly big. So I asked the revenue officer, I said, hey, how, you know, because I wanted to know, I was like, how are we doing? Are, are we, you know, I know that we, you know, maybe we missed a payment or something. I know we've done this. I know we've done this. How, you know, because she would sit down with us, you know, I, and I would tell her, I need to feel good about our direction. I need to have something positive out of this. And it was funny because she was like, okay you all are doing great yeah you've missed a payment or two but you have you're gonna have the money to pay it off that's just a given she's like i don't even worry about you i mean this is my job and i have to go out and find out but i don't worry about you i worry about the um uh you know the daycare worker the, the daycare owner who if she gets behind how's she going to make that up because she can't take on more kids or she can't, you know. And so the, the point is, is that I was able to get some sort of a comfort level that we were on the right track. So yet another. Well, I think most everybody have to remember, at least understand 
understands that we went through some verbal with judo um, in a, another team that we were working with. And one of the things that, that was really um, meaningful was when you come into that situation, know your outcome or what's your desired yeah. outcome to get there. And, and, and you're saying being selfish, but I, I think it's more of a, you know, I want this to go good for both of us. Yeah, um, it, it is. I'm coming into this with a little bit more of a direction than, than they might. So. Yeah.